Okay, we're going to make the uh, my, one of the Mighty Byte rails here. So uh, when it comes in from the solid that I downloaded from their website, it uh, looks like it's oriented and actually positioned in a pretty good spot. The bottom of the rail would be sitting flush with the machine table here. And the Z is pointed up toward the spindle, and that's what we want. Uh, what I might want to do, though, is maybe grab one of these uh, here in the center and just click on the Align Z. And what that will do is just center that middle so that when I read it in, it's not, you know, uh, referencing one end of the rail. It's more toward the middle. And uh, what I'll do here is, since I see these usually on the website as a darker gray, you can just window in on the whole thing by clicking and dragging um, from the top down. Uh, interestingly enough, if you go bottom up, this is a different type of uh, grouping method, which will only group things when it's completely inside of the box. So even though a portion of it is in the box, it won't group it. So this way I could grab just a little piece of it and it will grab the whole thing. So down here in the properties we can change the color to a darker gray. If you're not familiar with properties you can go to home, show hide, and then the properties is toggled on or off by unchecking or checking the box or the, the little check thing here. Uh, or you can hit the alt enter uh, hotkey on your keyboard. So now, uh, this component is modular and we would have like an OK vice or something sitting on top of it. So we would need to make a reference position for that and that would be flush with this, you know, top face here. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just set it uh, at one of these um, openings. So we can just pick anywhere along here because you know we can shift these along the rail along uh, in this case in Y and since the rail is typically going to go um, you know well I guess it could go either way but I'm gonna set these to be along Y just so they go against the grain with the T-nut slots so here what I'll do is we'll just use the translate function and when you translate, you know, I'm just basically selecting uh, the center point of the two, one of the, one of the openings here. I'm just going to pick this one here so that this is basically flush with the top of the rail. And that's pretty much it, you know, the... Uh, orientation of the X and the Y are not going to change when you translate. It's just the actual uh, position in 3D space. So the Z is pointing in the right you know, direction and everything. And I'm just going to go ahead at this point and make... Uh, we're going to make another fixture adapter. But I'll also make, just in case, a, a workpiece adapter as well. FA underscore one workpiece adapter underscore one fixture adapter, workpiece adapter. So with this now, and I can make maybe a couple of them. So again, if you want to make more than one, you can, the easiest way is for me just to grab that highlighted center point. And you can say here like uh, fixture adapter two. And maybe uh, I don't really need another workpiece adapter because the workpiece is typically going to be much larger than this. And I can, again, move it wherever I want. So once I have this, I can go to File, Save As, and we'll come down here and pick a fixture GDML. And we'll save it to our file folder. And now we could use this component for simulation. Okay, so we're going to do the uh, T-slot stop that goes with the rail as well. So this would be another modular component that fits into the rail. So this one looks like it's slightly off center so again sometimes yeah sometimes they're stored out a certain way and sometimes uh, you got to do a little bit of stuff so the first thing that we're going to do is trim up the solid so I'm going to go ahead and select this um, this bolt in the center 
And what I'm going to do is go to Modeling and pick Split Body. And what I'm going to do is zoom down in here and grab this bottom ring, that one. And what it'll do is it will split at the bottom. It's kind of hard to tell, but you can see the clear, kind of the, the, the bolt head on top and then the threaded portion below. I'm going to say OK. And then when I rotate my screen, I can see that the highlighted threaded area, if I delete that, I still have my nut or my uh, uh, the bolt head on top so that, you know, it looks nice. So uh, depending on what we want to do for the positioning, I'm going to assume this little gap, you know, that's not a big deal. We'll just leave it the way that it is. And what I want to do, though, is this face here, these faces are going to sit flush with the top of the rail. And that's where I made my uh, reference position on the rail itself, at the top of the rail. So what I want to do is align this with Z0. And I could pick any, you know, any of those two. And then I'll come down to Home and say Align Z. And here, actually, I did it the opposite direction. So I'll hold Shift on my keyboard and hit it again, and it flips it back over. Now, once I have that Z0 position, then what I could do is grab one of these inside because this is centered, and that's going to basically slide up and down the uh, center of the, uh, uh, the T-slot inside of the rail. And what I'll do there is just hit a line Z again, and it should center everything about that zero, or I mean the, you know, the, the hole. And we can see that everything looks like it's positioned where it needs to be. We're um, still at Z0 on that bottom face, etc. So now, um, do I need to really do anything? I don't. Um, you know, the way that uh, we can make these interact inside of uh, the Esprit simulation, I'm just going to leave this alone. And... Uh, you know, because usually it, this is a stop, so there might be something else here. Uh, well, yeah, let's go ahead and just create one fixture uh, adapter position right at the center bottom, uh, just where it would interface with the top of the, of the rail. And that way I have it just in case. Now, um, we can go ahead and save this out as a simulation solid. So I'll go to File, Save As and come down here and pick fixture file and we're going to leave the name as what it was and say save and now we could use this as part of the uh, simulation assembly